So after understanding about the diseases, now let us focus on the treatment part. So if we have certain kind of microbial infection or some other infection, then what is the mode of the treatment? What should be the mode of treatment and what principles we are following when we are looking for a treatment? So there are two ways to treat an infectious disease. So this is only for the infectious disease that we are talking about infectious disease or the disease which are happening through microbes, viruses, bacteria, fungi and so on. So those kind of diseases treatment mode we are discussing here. So first thing is reduce the effects of disease and to kill the cause of disease. Reduce the effect of disease means symptomatic relief we are talking about here and to kill the cause of disease that means we are controlling the microbial count. For the first, we can provide treatment that will reduce the symptoms. So symptomatic reliefs we will get through medicine. For example, if we have a common cold, we have a runny nose, we will take a medicine and it will stop the runny nose. And that is how the symptomatic relief will work and it will cure the symptom. It will only cure the symptom. It will not taking care of microbial count or they are not working on the microbes. They are only curing the symptoms. The symptoms are usually because of inflammation. Symptoms directed treatment will not make the infecting microbes go away. This is very important. Symptom directed treatment will not make the infecting microbe go away and the disease will not be cured. For that, we need to be able to kill off the microbes. So here there are two kinds of treatment. First treatment, first treatment is we are taking care of our symptoms because that will make us very uncomfortable that if we have a disturbed stomach, then stomach will ache for a longer period of time. So we will take a symptomatic relief medicine. If we have a runny nose because of common cold, then we will take a medicine which will block this runniness of the nose and we will feel a temporary relief from a disease. But this is not a complete cure of a disease. These are called symptomatic relief. So we have to take care of microbial infection and microbial count. So another type of medicine will take care of microbial count. They will kill these microbes and they will cure our infection. One will give you immediate relief, temporary relief and other medicine will cure your infection and it will give you permanent relief. So this both the type of medicines and both the type of treatments are necessary when we have infectious disease. Now, symptomatic reliefs, we know that how to cure our symptoms, but here we are talking about the medicine which will take care of the microbial count and which will kill the microbes. So, how do we kill the microbes? One way is to use medicine that will kill the microbes. We can classify microbes into categories like virus, bacteria, fungi and protozoa. Earlier, we have discussed that as the microbes will vary their mode of treatment will also vary because we are targeting on their biochemical pathways and based on that our medicine will also vary each of this group of organisms will have some essential biochemical life process which is peculiar to that group and not shared with any other group this processes may be pathways for synthesis of new substance or respiration so based on this biochemical pathways, they will multiply, they will make new substance and they will stay alive in our body. Once we are targeting this biochemical life process, they will no longer be able to multiply or survive in our body. So in turn, we are killing them. In turn, we are reducing their count. So these pathways will not be used by us either. So in between this group, the medicine will not be common. Medicine will work for any one particular group. As the group will change, medicine will change, microbial organism will change, the medicine will change. 
For example, our cell may make new substance by mechanism different from that used by bacteria. If we use the drug that blocks the bacterial synthesis pathway without affecting our own, this is what is achieved by antibiotics. We have discussed this thoroughly when we have discussed how antibiotics is working. Another example is drug that kill protozoa which causes malaria. So all this antibiotic drug or the drug which is controlling or killing microbes are working on the same principle that they are targeting their biochemical pathway and so that they will no longer be able to multiply or survive in our body. In turn, their count will become lower and our immune system will be able to handle that infection. So here we are discussing again that why is making antiviral medicine harder? So earlier we have discussed that. Suppose this is our cell and this is a virus. When virus is coming in contact with our cell, virus will make our cell a host and it will enter into our cell. This virus will use our cell to multiply and, and this virus is going to use our biochemical pathway and our cell to multiply. So, as we have discussed earlier that how bacteria are using different biochemical pathways and different processes to manufacturing some substances. Here viruses are using our biochemical pathways and our substances to multiply themselves. So for our immune system it is very difficult to identify that whether this cell is belong to our body or it is belong to virus. Because whatever biochemical pathway or whatever materials they are using, they are identical to our body processes because they are belongs to us. So it is difficult for our immune system to identify the infected cell and healthy cell. First point is viruses have few biochemical mechanism of their own not much and not very much differentiate or not very much different from our cell because they are using our metabolic process. They enter into our cell and use our cell metabolic and machinery for their life process. This means that there are relatively few virus specific target to aim at. So because of this targets are very very less it is difficult to make antiviral medicine. Majority of the processes what they are following or using are ours only. Despite this limitation, there are now effective antiviral drug, for example, drugs that keep HIV infection under control. So scientists have succeeded and they are making antiviral drug, but it is lot more harder compared to making antibiotic drug. We have very few biochemical pathways which we can target, we can aim or we can kill the virus and keep their count low. So when we are talking about curing a disease, one of the important aspect is prevention. For example, in a COVID pandemic, we were continuously sanitizing our hand and we were wearing a mask. So those were the preventive measure. It is the primary measure that you should take before you are catching any infectious disease. So prevention is always better than cure. Why do we need to prevent this? The person's body functions are damaged and may never recover completely in some of the disease. So prevention is better. The treatment will take time which means that someone is suffering from a disease is likely to be bedridden for some time or if we can give a proper treatment. The person suffering from an infectious disease can serve as a source from where the infection may spread to other people, family members and to the community. So because of these three major reasons we need to prevent the diseases. How can we prevent the disease? There are two ways to prevent the disease. First is 
via general ways and second via specific ways general ways means living healthy lifestyle eating healthy food and drinking safe pure water specific ways means remove possibilities of mosquito breeding vaccination or if the viral infection is spreading in a community use mask sanitize your hands frequently or taking proper hygienic care of your body and your surrounding so these are the general ways and these are the specific ways specific ways means we are working towards that particular disease for example if dengue is spreading in a community then we are taking care of the puddles that there should be no puddles in a community so that the breeding possibilities of the mosquitoes will be nullified we will apply mosquito repellent cream and so on so when you are taking prevention for a one specific disease then it is called a specific ways when you are taking a general precautionary measure then they are called general ways second is the availability of proper and sufficient food for healthy and strong immune system this point is very very important when we are talking about infectious disease or any hereditary disease healthy and disciplined lifestyle will give you strong and immune system and this strong immune system will keeps you healthy from any minor diseases so these are some of the preventive measures by which we can prevent the diseases now when we are talking about strong immune system then what is the need of strong immune system the immune system of our body is normally fighting off microbes we have cell that specialize in killing infecting microbes this cells go into action each time infecting microbes enter into the body so when any minor infection will be there we will not even get any symptom we will not get to know that we got an infection or we got some microbes into our body our immune system will take care of that and we will get rid of it so that is the benefit of strong immune system if they are successful we do not actually come down with any disease so if our immune system is strong and if our immune system will be successful in killing those infectious bacteria then we will not get any kind of disease the immune cells manage to kill off the infection long before it assumes major proportion if the number of infecting microbes is controlled the manifestation of disease will be minor in other words becoming exposed to or infected with an infectious microbe does not necessarily mean developing noticeable disease so with small microbial count and with stronger immune system majority of the diseases will go unnoticeable so this is the main benefit and advantage of strong immune system so one way of looking at severe infection disease is that represents a lack of success of the immune system so frequently if you are catching cold or frequently if you are having some microbial infection then you need to work on your strong immune system so the functioning of the immune system like any other system in our body will not be good if proper and sufficient nourishment and food is not available so how to make our immune system strong so first point is with sufficient and balanced nutrition therefore the second basic principle of prevention of infectious disease is the availability of proper and sufficient food for everyone when we are talking about prevention so till now we have discussed the three pathways of the prevention first is via medicine in medicine we have talked about symptomatic relief medicine and killing microbial infection the medicine which will kill the microbial infection so two kind of medicine we have discussed second we have discussed that prevention is better than cure or 
leading a healthy life or having a sufficient nutritious food and strong immune system will be a better prevention against all the the infection so second is our strong immune system will save us from any kind of microbial infection and third one is vaccination so what is a vaccine and vaccination will safeguard us against this microbial infection so having the disease once or taking vaccine for specific disease can prevent subsequent attack of the same disease this happens because when the immune system first sees an infectious microbe it respond against it and then remembers it specifically so this is the principle on which vaccination will work that once you will have for example infection of chickenpox then for lifelong you will not have infection of chickenpox why because your immune system will remember the response or your immune system will remember the at how to kill or control this specific kind of microbial infection so next time when you will expose to this kind of infection it will be it will be very very minor or your immune system will take up successfully and it will go unnoticed you will not even feel that you have exposed to those or that particular disease so based on this all the vaccine will work so the next time that particular microbe or its close relative enters the body the immune system respond with a greater vigor this eliminates the infection even more quickly than the first time around this is the basis of principle of immunization on this all the vaccine will work we can trigger the immune system into developing a memory of particular infection by injecting something that mimics the microbe we want to vaccinate against into the body so a part of a virus or a dead virus or something which belongs to that virus which will mimic the body type of virus we will inject into a person's body our immune system will work toward that and our immune system will store that response that in future if this kind of infection will come to the body how to respond that and after that in future we will no longer be affected by that particular treatment this does not actually cause the disease but this would prevent any subsequent exposure to in infecting microbe from turning into an actual disease so every time whenever we will get exposed to the same kind of disease our immune system will remember this microbes and they will act towards that Oh, 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 oh,